be very close to it. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد if I can have all the brothers that are standing in the back to please move forward and fill in the gaps and if I can have the brothers in the front to move as close as possible إن شاء الله so that we can gain the full benefit of the gathering, of the Qiraat, of the Qur'an that is going to be recited, of all the nashis that are going to be recited, for all the bayans and all the talks that the children have prepared so hardly for and so intensely for. So I would recommend and I would request everyone if they could please move up inshallah uh, to gain all of this barakah. So inshallah, I would like to begin this program by inviting all of the, the ulama, the scholars, the teachers to come and please join us here on stage so that we can gain the most benefit from you. Inshallah, if we can have the scholars come up, that will be greatly appreciated. All the ulama that have come from far away. Please join us here on stage and take your place. Okay, inshallah. So, Alhamdulillah, thumma, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has truly blessed us to come into this gathering. And before we do anything, before we start off, the program, I would like to call upon Yusuf Ahmad, who is a HIF student in Hafiz Faisal's class, to come and do some qiraat for us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-rahmani r-rahim. Tabarakalladhi biyadihi al-mulk. Wahuwa ala kulli shayin qadir. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق سبع سماوات طباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فارجع البصر هل ترى من فطور ثم ثم ارجع البصر كرتين ينقلب ينقلب اليك البصر خاسئا وهو حسير ولقد زينا السماء 
الدنيا بمصابيح بمصابيح وجعلناها رجوما للشياطين للشياطين وأعتدنا لهم عذاب السعير وللذين كفروا بربهم عذاب جهنم وبئس المصير إذا ألقوا فيها سمعوا لها شهيقا وهي تفور تكاد تميز, تكاد تميز من الغيظ كلما ألقي فيها فوج سألهم خزنتها سألهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم نذير قالوا بلى قد جاءنا نذير فكذبنا فكذبنا وقلنا ما نزل الله من شيء إن أنتم إلا في ضلال كبير وقالوا لو كنا نسمع نسمع أو نعقل ما كنا في أصحاب السعير صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله تكبير 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 ما شاء الله ما شاء الله The reason why we typically start off with the Quran is because each and every single one of us here sitting in this masjid is associated with that book. Right? Each and every single one of us has a ta'alluq, has a connection with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the same exact reason why we are sitting here today. When you think about the amount of effort these children are putting into the Qur'an, and you think about the amount of hours they're sitting down on the ground in front of their teachers, and they're reciting the Qur'an, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, You can, th you can imagine the amount of pressure that these children are facing. This one child that came up, Hafiz Yusuf, sorry, Yusuf Ahmed, who is a student of Hafiz Faisal's. How long did it take for him to come up on this chair and to prepare this one side of Surah Mulk for us today? It takes time, it takes effort. And subhanAllah, we have the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hands as, as if it is, it is completed. The entire book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is completed. But when we think about the Qur'an, when it was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the amount of ayahs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over a period of 23 years, Right? Over a period of 23 years, and how it was made into a book, and how it was presented to us, and how the children nowadays, mashaAllah, are reciting the Holy Quran. Where we cannot comprehend, for example, during the month of Ramadan, when we start reciting the Qur'an, we take it page at a time, page at a time, page at a time. But these children will go over the same exact page 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, just so it is fluent on their tongue. 
just so they have it memorized. So that's one. That's point one. That is the reason why we are here today. Because the ta'alluq that we all have in the, the ta'alluq that we have together is because of the Quran. The connection that we have as a brotherhood is because of the Quran. And there's a second reason. It is the ta'alluq that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we establish a program? How can we establish anything without first connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is something that we need to comprehend and we need to ponder over and we need to think about. Subhanallah, the amount, again, the amount of effort that these children put in is immense. So inshallah, if we can have everyone listen attentively, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are being recited. We are talking about the connection that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I humbly request everyone to please participate, pay attention, focus on the program, listen to each and every single word, every single letter, even though some of us might not understand it, but yet we believe in it. We believe in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether we know the meaning or we do not know the meaning. And this is what we are here to establish, the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, Without further ado, next, inshallah, I would like to call on Hafiz Swahib from the fifth year Alam course for a Qirat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. لقد صدق الله رسوله الرؤيا بالحق لتدخلن المسجد الحرام لتدخلن المسجد جد الحرام إن شاء فعلم ما لم تعلموا فجعل من دون ذلك فتحا قريبا هو ليظهره 
على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا محمد رسول الله محمد رسول الله والذين معه أشد رحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا سيماهم في السجود ذلك مثلهم في التوراة ومثلهم في كزرع أخرج شطاه فأزره فاستولض فاستوى على سوق فاستوى على سوقه وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات منهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله تكبير 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 If I'm going to be completely honest with everyone, we should be saying Allahu Akbar 10 times louder just to motivate these children to come up and steal the show. So the next time, inshallah, actually let's practice. Let's practice. Let's start this off. Let's practice. The minute I say takbir, I want the entire masjid to go as loudly as possible. Takbir. <laughs> mashallah. Mashallah, mashallah. The surah that Hafiz Swahib 
has just recited, there's a very unique surah. Because in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by, calls Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by his name. Muhammad Rasulullah. But throughout the entire Qur'an, in multiple places, you would see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often calls Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not by his name, but rather with the quality of abd. That he is a servant, he is a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what makes being an abd so unique? When we look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? As soon as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received wahi, received revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, right? And when he started to openly preach Islam towards the people of Makkah Mukarramah, the non-Muslims of Makkah Mukarramah, what happened? Did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ever, ever move back from his posts? Did he ever say that this message, this work is so hard that I, cannot, I will not be able to continue moving forward? Or let's go another 16 years into the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we look at all of the various battles and how much effort Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa went through and how much the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum they gave. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the battle of Uhud his bottom two teeth fell out of his mouth. His cheeks were bleeding, his lip was busted. Ali radiallahu an, he kept on coming to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with buckets and buckets of water. But that did not stop the bleeding until Fatima radiallahu anha, she broke off a piece of straw mat, she burnt it, and she put it on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's face just so, just so the bleeding would stop. Or when you look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at home, Aisha radiallahu anha would be lying down, sleeping, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would be praying his tahajjud. These are the qualities of an abd. The reason why Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala keeps on calling Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not by his name but because of his worship, because he is calling him an Abd, because of his worship, because of the amount of sacrifices that he went through. In Surah Al Ahzab, it comes, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ That the best, that indeed for you and the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a great example. What example is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring to? It is the quality of the Abd. That look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in terms of his akhlaq and how he dealt with people. Look at the, look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in terms of ibadah, in terms of worship. No one can beat Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not even the most Sufi person today. Not even the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. This is the quality that we need to incorporate into our lives. Or rather... Not incorporate, but we need to weld. We need to weld into our lives. We need to forcefully put our foot down and we need to say that enough is enough. It is time for me to change our life. Our lives. My life. So inshallah, moving on with the agenda. We have a bayan by Saeed Ansari who is in Hafiz Sajid's class. So inshallah, I would like to call upon um, Saeed Ansari, if you can please come up. Jazakumullah khair.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر صدق الله العظيم As Muslims, what do we believe in? We believe that there is one Allah and one Allah only. We believe in all of his prophets. We believe that Muhammad sallallahu was the last of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prophets. We believe in all of the books Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down to us. We believe in his, all of his angels. We believe that all good and bad happens from the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we believe that there is life after death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had an elite class of prophets. And, sorry, an elite class of human beings known as the prophets. Likewise, he also had an elite class of angels known as the malaika. The first and noblest of them all, his name is Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam. Jibreel alayhi salam had the opportunity to talk to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the most in the creation of Allah. He was the one who took Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the seven heavens. He was the one who told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was a prophet. He was the one who brought the Quran to all of, uh, to all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prophets. He was the one uh, who told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that his time had passed and it was time to meet his Rabb. Jibreel alayhi salam is also known as Hayatul Qulub, the life of the hearts. Why? Because he brought revelation. And through revelation, our hearts live. The second angel of the elite class, his name is Mikail alayhi salatu was salam. Mikail alayhi salatu was salam was in distribution of a risk wal riyah wal provision, sustenance, rain, winds. Mikail alayhi salatu was salam was responsible for bringing prosperity. That's why the scholars described him as Hayat al Nas. The second two angels are in relation to death. So two of them are in relation to life and two of them are in relation to death. The third one, his name is Israfil alayhi salatu was salam. Who do you think will take us back to Allah when we die? Israfil alayhi salatu was salam. Israel alayhi salatu was salam. He will be the, one, he will be the last one who are on us in this dunya. He will be the one in, uh, he will be the last one to smile at us. Um, the th fourth and final angel, uh, it was a very special angel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I created this one special angel with one task and one task alone. That is to blow the one for the day of judgment. His name is Israfil alayhi salatu was salam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I lost my appetite for this world when I saw Israfil alayhi salatu wa salam with his lips already on the horn and his eyes gazing like stars at the throne of Allah waiting for the command. That means this whole world relies on the horn of Israfil alayhi salatu wa salam. May Allah give us the love and understanding for all of, all of his angels, especially the elite class. Wa akhra da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. MashaAllah. Takbir! 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 MashaAllah, MashaAllah. When I saw Saeed come up here, it reminded me of, um, of a story that one of our beloved teachers mentioned to us in one of his talks in our school days. And that is the story of Bayezid al-Bastami, rahimahullah. Bayezid al-Bastami, rahimahullah, he was like any other kid. He would, you know, you tell him to do something, he would do the complete opposite. You tell him not to mess around with the plates and the cups, and he'll do exactly that. He was a very mischievous child. Unfortunately, when he was very young, his father was on his deathbed, 
And he turned to the mother and he instructed her to make Bayezid al-Bistami rahimahullah a wali of Allah, a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After, after Bayezid al-Bistami rahimahullah, his father passed away, the mother started to worry, worry more, worry more about how am I going to make this child into a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How am I going to make this child a person that people would come to for nasiha, for knowledge, for ilm? So his mother found out about this sheikh that lived in a neighboring village and she took him to the sheikh. She explained the whole situation the Shaykh agreed, saying that he will keep the child here, make him learn Islamic knowledge, make him learn the deen, make him learn the etiquette. And as soon as she was walking out, she turned to the Shaykh and she mentioned that my son cannot return home until he becomes a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until my child becomes a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, until he becomes a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is not allowed to return home. Subhanallah. So now the Shaykh started to worry that how can a mother sacrifice her child to such an extent that he wants that she wants nothing to do with her child until he becomes the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this child, subhanallah, Bayezid al-Bastami rahimallah, he grew up to be one of the best most renowned scholars, he became a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The story is a little bit extended, but I'm trying to shorten it for time purposes. But he did become one of the greatest walis of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he eventually did meet his mother. But nowadays, no mother, no father is willing to sacrifice his or her child until they become a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No father or mother is willing to go without talking to their child, without, be, without becoming the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is impossible. Especially for the young ones out there, where we have our fathers and our mothers calling us all the time, Kaparo, where are you, where are you, where are you? You can imagine the amount of sacrifice the parents made, or the parent, the mother of Bayezid al-Bastami rahimahullah made, when it came to ilm, when it came to knowledge. When it came to etiquettes. This is something that we need to comprehend. And mashaAllah, Saeed, the person, the, the child that was just here. I'm just guessing. I'm guessing he's 9 or 10. But he came up here, stood in front of you, and gave you a talk. There is no way that he was not nervous. Trust me, my hands are pretty sweaty right now from talking to you. There was no way he was not nervous, yet he had the courage to come up and speak to you. He shared the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He shared some hikmah, some nasiha. This is the sacrifice that we need to make. We need to make sacrifices. So inshallah, next up on the agenda, we have, mashallah, Hafiz Khalid Samrudiya, who is in the Tharatha year or the third year of the Alam course. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, I will be, re I'll be re um, reading this nasheed in memory of Hazrat Dr. Ismail Memon, rahimahullah. Har dilhe hazi, har aankhe hai nam. اب زبط کا بندھن ٹوٹ گیا مو موڑ لیا ہے کیوں اس نے 
वो हमसे क्यों अब रूठ गया खुद आख तो अपनी बंद कर ली हर आख मगर नम ना के हुई खुद आख तो अपनी बंद कर ली हर आख मगर नम ना के हुई दिल जोर से धड़का ये सुन कर वो शेख हमारे छूट गए दिल जोर से धड़का ये सुन कर वो शेख हमारे छूट गए हर दिल है हजी हर आँखें हैं नम अब जब का बंधन टूट गया इस दिल को तसली कैसे दे इस आँख को कैसे समझाए इस दिल को तसली कैसे दे इस आँख को कैसे समझाए बेताब हुआ है सारा जहाँ अब दिल ही हमारा टूट गया बेताब हुआ है सारा जहाँ अब दिल ही हमारा टूट गया हर दिल है हजी हर आँख है नम अब जब का बंधन टूट गया हर शख्स यहाँ गमगीन हुआ अब कौन तसली किस को दे हर शख्स यहाँ गमगीन हुआ अब कौन तसली किस को दे गम खार नहीं है कोई भी महफिल को ऐसे लौट गया गम खार नहीं है कोई भी महफिल को ऐसे लौट गया हर दिल है हजी हर आँख है नम अब जब का बंधन टूट गया राजी बर ही रहना है जन्नत में मिलेंगे शेख से हम राजी बर ही रहना है जन्नत में मिलेंगे शेख से हम अज फर को तसली हो जाए कह दो के नहीं वो छूट गया अज फर को तसली हो जाए कह दो के नहीं वो छूट गया हर दिल है हजी हर आँख है नम अब जब का बंधन टूट गया मुँह मोड़ लिया है क्यों उसने वो हमसे क्यों अब रूठ गया जकल्ला खैर
ماشاء الله تكبير 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 ما شاء الله When we think about sacrifice in our religion in the past we know that all of the prophets made a great deal of sacrifices for example the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Yusuf alayhi salam being stripped away from his parents and being in a city where he did not know of anyone but there is this one sacrifice made by a prophet that when you realize how big the sacrifice is normally we say these stories to our children and our families as if it was folk tale but sometimes what we need to do is we need to look at it in the perspective of the people that were in the situation and this sacrifice that i'm talking about was made by ibrahim ali salam ibrahim ali salam was once commanded by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to leave his wife and his child in the middle of nowhere in the middle of nowhere there was not a single tops or shop right in sight there was no source of food there was no source of water and yet ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam was commanded by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to leave his wife and his child in the middle of the desert when ibrahim alayhi salam when he left Hajra alayhi salam she was calm and collected she she said that okay you know what this is from uh, this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is okay but Ismail alayhi salam who was the child of Ibrahim alayhi salam when he started to cry and at this point Hajra alayhi salam started to worry about her own safety and her child's safety she started to make this effort of going back and forth from Safa and Marwa in search of water in search of something and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly blessed Ismail alayhi salam and Hajra alayhi salam with this, with the well of Zamzam the effort that Hajra alayhi salam put in running from from Marwa to Safa, Safa to Marwa in search of something to comfort and aid her child is something that we will not be able to comprehend why because again we share the story as if it's a folk tale as if it's just a story among the many other stories likewise there are so many people who made sacrifices throughout their entire lives yet they go unrecognized they make sacrifice after sacrifice and after sacrifice all of us over here in this masjid is sitting because of one person's sacrifice and that is none other than dr ismail maimon sab rahimahullah Dr. Ismail was a doctor living the best life he could possibly live in Saudi Arabia so much so that one of our teachers mentioned a story about him where his brother would often take his car and drive around and Hazrat he did not like this so he went out of his way he bought a car just for his brother he said do not touch my car drive this car instead and yet a person who was living comfortably and with the most peace that anyone could ever offer decided to come to america to establish a school 
to establish a school. All of us, each and every single one of us here that is sitting in this masjid is here because of this one person's sacrifice. SubhanAllah. If you just hear about the stories about how it all began, of how madrasa was, it was literally the building where we just had our meal, this building over here, and the building right across the street, which is now known as Darul Rashid. How did one person do all of this? How did one person become the means for us to be sitting here in this masjid? While following the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, How did one person rename the city that was known as the city of churches to the city of mosques, to the city of masjids? That was all done by this one person's sacrifice. And that is exactly what Hafiz Khalid recited for us. Something very beautiful for us to remember Hazrat Bai. And this is something that we need to cherish. That right now, Alhamdulillah, we have a house, we have food, we have everything. And we're coming to the masjid, we're praying our salah. Our, our children are learning about the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're reciting the Qur'an, they're learning so much, and so much, so much, so much. Until we tend to forget how did all of this happen. It just becomes another folktale. That there's no way that this one person started it all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward Hazrat in the highest of manner. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him Jannatul for those bighayri hisab. Ameen. So inshallah, next up we have a tilawa by Muhammad Azam who is a HIF student. Inshallah, Muhammad Azam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Lillahi ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Wa in tubdu ma fi أنفسكم أو تخفوه يحاسبكم بالله فيغفر لمن يشاء ويعذب من يشاء والله على كل شيء قدير آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا 
أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله تكبير 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 ما شاء الله again the young age the courage and the ability to come up and recite some Quran is nothing that should be taken lightly inshallah next on the agenda we do have a guest speaker who will be talking about the challenges faced by our youth in, here in the United States of America. He was my teacher for one year. He was honestly one of the best teachers a guy could ask for. Inshallah, next up we have Mufti Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nah, man. I'm not feeling it. Did you guys eat? You guys ate, right? Where's Mufti Faisal? Where's Mufti Faisal? I'm sure he gave you guys good food for lunch. Now, let's try it again. I'm going to say salam and I need a loud reply, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nah, I'm still not feeling it. All that energy that you got from eating lunch, we need to use that over here. Let's try it one more time. Otherwise, I'm going to walk off. One more time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, that's better, mashallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafin anbiya'i wal mursaleen. 